You won't find it in Apple's claims or marketing videos, but its new MacBook is a time machine. You see, by looking directly at it, it teleports you into the future of the laptop. Where's Doc Brown and all those flying cars? Anyway, as I was saying, with its new MacBook, Apple has imagined that laptops will be reduced to just a thin screen, a keyboard, and a magical piece of touch-sensitive glass. Oh, and just one port, because in the future, nearly everything is wireless. The problem? We're not living in the future yet. I mean, do you see anybody else here? Also, I speak for the people of the future when I say that we don't want design to deprive us of battery life and speed, and certainly not for $1,300. Unless $1,300 is really cheap in the future, then I'm okay with it. Oh, but this design. Can we just talk about for a second how compact and drop-dead gorgeous this laptop is? Did I say laptop? Because it looks more like a showpiece. It can even match your jewelry. So as nice as that new mirrored Apple logo is for checking if you have something in your teeth, it can easily scratch. Other than that, the two pound all metal machine really does feel quite sturdy, which is a good thing since you'll really wanna carry this thing around a lot. Adding to that beauty is this beautiful 12 inch retina display. With the crazy high resolution display, photos look like they were painted on and even boring text is nice to read. Now, when I go back to my Air's lower resolution screen, everything looks pixelated. But the new Force Touch trackpad is my favorite part of the laptop. When the computer is off, the piece of glass does not press down. When it's on, sensors measure the pressure you're putting on it. A quick vibration in sound makes it feel like you're clicking. There are different pressure levels too. For instance, when you press hard on a word, it looks up the definition. The keyboard's also different, though not necessarily better. Because the panel is so much thinner, the keys had to be shorter. They're still plenty wide and have a good amount of bounds to them, but I really did miss the height and comfort of my Airs keys. But that's not the worst of the sacrifices. Let me introduce you to my new enemy, the MacBook's single USB Type-C port. One day, this is gonna be amazing. It has bi-directional power. That means the laptop can charge while being connected to peripherals like monitors and phones. But living with one port, one that doesn't work with much yet, is painful. The best answer is this $80 dongle. With it, you can charge the laptop, plug in a USB device, and even a monitor. Forget the dongle at home, and all you can really do is cry. And whatever you do, don't leave the charger at home either. The laptop only gets seven hours of usage, about four hours less than my 13-inch MacBook Air. Yeah, it turns out I'm full of complaints in the future. And here's another. The laptop isn't even as fast as my Air. It isn't slow when surfing the web or doing regular work, but with more processor-intensive tasks, like managing lots of open apps, it does get sluggish. The MacBook has so much of what I want in the laptop of the future. The right screen and trackpad in a stunning portable design. As more companies adopt USB Type-C, I'll get over that gripe, but I'm still gonna want more speed and battery life. That means I'm really happy in the present and with my more affordable MacBook Air. I'll come back here eventually. There just better not be any $80 dongles when I get here. <laughs>